Um, so the book I've chosen to study and look at is Ruth. Um, I haven't really practiced, so I'm just going to read my notes. So apologise if it's you know boring. <laughs> um, so the first thing that struck me when I started looking into the book is that the events that took place in the book of Ruth happened during the time of the judges, um, which is surprising given the contrast between the two books. In Judges, there are mass killings, there's prostitution, civil war, and evil priests, whilst Ruth reads a bit like a romance novel. So it's for that reason I focus my study on the relationship between two key people um, in the book, Ruth and Boaz, um, and how they represent a picture of the church's relationship with Jesus Christ. So... I just need to sort of give, I know most of us will know the book of Ruth, but I need to give a summary um, of sort of events that happened prior to Ruth and Boaz meeting one another. So the book starts quite depressingly with a famine, um, followed by the decision of a man called Elimelech to take his wife and two sons out of Bethlehem to the land of Moab. That's followed by the death of Elimelech and his two sons, but not before they had taken Moabite wives. So Naomi, um, who was married to Elimelech, is grief-stricken and becomes very bitter and decides that there's nothing left for her in Moab, but also she hears that God has visited her people and therefore decides to return to Bethlehem. Her two daughter-in-laws want to go with her, but after Naomi dissuades them and urges them to return to the family, only Ruth remains loyal to her mother-in-law. Ruth not only leaves her home, her family and her people, but she pledges that she will follow Naomi's God and make him her God as well. So this is the first example that we see of Ruth being a type of church. Those who've left their old lives and followed after the living God, trusting in his grace by faith. So it's from that point on in the story, really, that it takes a drastic turn for the better as we read how God blesses those that follow him in faith. It seems to me divine intervention that brought Ruth and Boaz together. Um, Ruth, the Gentile from the Moabites, who had been an enemy of Israel, with Boaz, an Israelite, and a near kinsman to Elimelech, Naomi's late husband. So the first interaction that we see between Ruth and Boaz occurs in the field that's owned by Boaz, where Ruth is gleaning for leftover grain. The law given in Leviticus provides that the poor widows and foreigners are to be provided for and can pick up the grain left over from the harvesters. Boaz, however, goes beyond the expectations of the law in order to ensure that Ruth is both provided for and protected and shows great kindness towards her. In Boaz's character here, we can see the love of Jesus who replaced the law with the cross and faith in him. Boaz asks Ruth to only work his field until the end of harvest season. And if we compare this to God's command to the church today, we see that he he owns the fields and we are the labourers that are working to bring in the harvest. Ruth in her hard work gleaning in the field is a picture of what the church should look like today. So Boaz further extends his kindness by inviting Ruth to have bread and wine vinegar with him. And in times such as this, to to eat with someone was to enter into a covenant with them. We can also see a picture of communion because of the act of taking bread and wine. So when Naomi hears about all that had happened, she gets very excited because Boaz is a near kinsman, which means redeemer in Hebrew. The role of a kinsman redeemer is to provide an heir for a brother who had died, redeem land that a poor relative had sold outside of the family, and to redeem a relative that had been sold into slavery. Just as Boaz was Ruth's kinsman redeemer, so is Jesus our redeemer. We are no longer slaves to sin because he has paid the price and brought us back. So Naomi instructs Ruth to wash, put on perfume, and to best clothes. In other words, to pre- to prepare herself as a bride and to go to the threshing floor where Boaz was working. This is prophetic since threshing is the act of separating the wheat from the tares. In Matthew 13, Jesus tells us there is another coming harvest of people in the world. 
The world is the field, the wheat is the children of God, and the tares are those that don't inherit the kingdom of God. Just as Ruth had to make herself ready as a bride for Boaz, so too do God's church need to make ourselves ready for Jesus' return. So when Boaz wakes startled to find Ruth lying at his feet, she asks him to spread his wings over her and she will put her trust in him. In the Old Testament, wings are spoken of as a covering and place of safety. Many times this refers to God's people under the wings of God's protection. And of course, we are covered by the blood of Jesus. So Boaz fulfills the requirements of the law and marries one of the few women in the Bible named in the genealogy of Jesus. Boaz is called the Redeemer, the Restorer of Life and a Nourisher. These are all terms that could describe Jesus to us today. So there are so many messages that can be taken from the book of Ruth, but I've summed them up in just a few. That first of all, God's love and grace extends to the Gentiles who have been grafted into his family. Secondly, God's, God blesses those who put their trust in him. Sometimes this means to follow him as Ruth did with blind faith. Thirdly, we are redeemed by the blood of Jesus and are to make ourselves ready for Christ's return. And finally, that God can cause good to come out of anything bad that man does. Ruth came out of Moab, a people born of incest, and ends up being an ancestor of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's it.